Hello, I'm Dr. Eileen Davila, Associate Medical Officer of Health for the Region of Peel. Immunization programs are among the most cost-effective way to prevent disease. The success of these programs depends heavily on the maintenance of vaccine stability and potency. It's important to understand and use proper vaccine and storage practice. Staff, whether in doctor's offices or healthcare facilities, play an important role in ensuring that vaccines retain their potency and are safe for use by Peel residents. They also play an important role in reducing cost associated with vaccine wastage. These videos will help staff in doctor's offices and in healthcare facilities to properly store and handle publicly funded vaccines. Vaccines are sensitive biological substances that can lose potency and effectiveness if exposed to temperatures below 2 or above 8 degrees Celsius. The same happens if exposed to direct sunlight or fluorescent light. Exposed vaccine can result in a reduced immune response or increased adverse reactions. The loss of vaccine potency cannot be reversed. Before you can order and store vaccines, here's a list of things you'll need to have ready. Refrigerator designated for vaccines, bottles of water for thermal mass, perforated baskets for organizing vaccine in your fridge, digital current min-max thermometer, a diluent vial, do not unplug sticker, temperature logbook, pen, and tape. Each facility wishing to use publicly funded vaccine should assign one person to oversee that the storage and handling guidelines are met. All staff members should be trained in these guidelines. They should also know how to use the min-max thermometer and how to document the temperature readings twice daily. To properly store vaccines in your office, you need a stable refrigerator that consistently maintains temperatures between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. A commercial lab-grade refrigerator is ideal. A regular kitchen fridge is the next best thing. You should avoid small under-the-counter bar fridges because they do not hold stable temperatures. Make sure your fridge is out of direct sunlight. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for air circulation around the back and sides. Doing so helps to keep temperatures stable. Place the refrigerator in a secure area that only your staff can access. You should attach a Do Not Unplug sticker above the electrical outlet to which the fridge is plugged or if not accessible to the front of the fridge. Put full water bottles on the door and in the bottom drawers or compartments. The water bottles act as thermal mass and will help to regulate the temperature in your fridge. Use labeled baskets to organize vaccines in your fridge. Next, set up the thermometer. All thermometers with an in-out option should be set to the out position to measure the temperature inside of the fridge. Attach the thermometer probe to the diluent vial and put it in a box labeled probe, similar in size to a vaccine box. Put the box containing the center probe in the center of the middle shelf and tape it in place. Check the temperatures over the next few hours. Get comfortable reading your digital thermometer. You'll have to document the current, minimum, and maximum temperatures in your logbook twice a day. Here's how to check temperatures. Look at the thermometer. You will see that the current temperature is displayed. Write down the temperature, current time, and your initials on the appropriate temperature log sheet. Now press the maximum memory button. Record the maximum temperature on the log sheet. Press Max Min Memory button again. Record the minimum temperature on the log sheet. This part is important. You must reset your thermometer after each reading. Press Max Min Memory button. Press Clear. You will see dashed lines. The maximum temperature has been reset. Press Max Min Memory button again. Press Clear again. Now the minimum temperature has also been reset. Once you begin documenting temperatures in your logbook, Check that the temperatures are within the cold chain range. If any of your temperature readings are not in range, you should slightly adjust the fridge thermostat. Keep in mind it may take 24 to 48 hours for your fridge to respond. Keep checking and recording the fridge temperatures. When the readings are stable and within cold chain range, contact Peel Public Health Vaccine Management and Physician Information Team to schedule an inspection. A public health nurse will visit your facility to conduct an inspection and answer any other questions you may have. Continue monitoring documenting temperatures. 
Report any temperatures below 2 or above 8 degrees Celsius to Peel Public Health as soon as they occur. Remember it's important to use proper vaccine storage and handling practices at all times. Together, we can make sure that vaccines retain their potency and are safe for Peel residents. Once your facility meets compliance, the public health nurse will direct you to place an order for a small amount of vaccine. Remember you should only order and store a one month supply of vaccine in your fridge. To place an order, you should use the most recent vaccine order request form. It is available on our website. Ensure that the form is filled out completely. The form includes information about order processing times and pickup locations. To pick up vaccine, you must have a pre-cooled, hard-sided cooler that is properly set up to transport vaccine. To set up your cooler, you'll need hard-sided cooler, transport digital min-max thermometer with the probe attached to a diluent vial, bubble wrap, frozen or fridge cool water blankets. Your cooler will take approximately 20 to 30 minutes to pre-cool, so plan your trip accordingly. Here's how to set up. You can also follow the diagram attached to your cooler. Place a frozen ice blanket on the bottom of the cooler. Cover the ice blanket with one layer of bubble wrap. Put the thermometer probe in the middle on top of the bubble wrap. Now you need to add a second layer. It can be a fridge cool water blanket without bubble wrap or a frozen ice blanket with a second layer of bubble wrap underneath. The choice between ice and water blankets depends on the distance traveled to pick up vaccine or the weather. Once your cooler is packed, you should monitor the temperature using a digital MinMax transport thermometer. Please refer to the vaccine storage and handling package for instructions on how to use this thermometer. Once your cooler is in cold chain range between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius, reset MinMax temperatures. You are now ready to pick up vaccine. At pickup location, place the vaccines in the same area as the thermometer probe. Make sure the probe is in the middle. It should not touch ice or the walls of the cooler directly. This can cause false readings. You will only be able to pick up and transport what fits in your cooler. Please do not open the order bags. Opening bags may cause a cold chain exposure. Do not place the cooler in the trunk of your car or on the floor. Do not leave vaccines unattended at any time. Transport the cooler on the seat inside your car. Once you arrive at your office with the vaccine, immediately check the current, minimum, and maximum temperatures to ensure that cold chain range was maintained during transport. If all the temperature readings are within cold chain range, you may put the vaccine in your fridge. Be mindful of fridge temperatures when organizing your vaccines. Leaving your fridge open for too long may cause temperatures to rise and cold chain break may occur. Store vaccines in the middle of your fridge. Never store vaccine in a door or in bottom drawers or compartments. Temperatures are not stable in those areas. Keep vaccine in the original boxes. Organize vaccines by type, grouping like vaccines together. Put the vaccines with the shortest expiry dates at the front. Only remove vaccine from your fridge if you are ready to administer it. Remember to mark multi-dose vials with date of first use. Discard these according to the manufacturer's recommendations. If any of the temperatures, min, max, or current, was out of cold chain range during transport, the vaccine experienced a cold chain break. If this happens, here's what you should do. Put the vaccine into a designated area of your fridge Label the vaccine do not use and separate it from the unaffected vaccine. Call Peel Public Health as soon as possible to report the incident. A Peel Public Health nurse will work with you to determine the potency and stability of the vaccines in question. Depending on the direction you receive, you may have to yellow dot, red dot, or discard the exposed vaccines. You will receive instructions on how to do this. If instructed to discard vaccine, here's what you do. Complete Part B of the Vaccine Cold Chain Assessment and or Wastage Form. Remove the vaccine from the fridge and put it in a bag. Attach the form to the bag and return the vaccine to any of the pickup locations. Twice daily, monitor and document your fridge temperatures. 
If they go outside of cold chain range, report immediately to Peel Public Health. Place a do not use vaccine magnet or sign on the fridge. Do not use any vaccine until it was assessed by a Peel Public Health nurse. You may choose to monitor your refrigerator using a data logger device. Data loggers provide the user with benefits in the event of a cold chain break. They can show the exact time of the incident and help us make an accurate assessment of vaccine stability and potency. It's important to realize that using a data logger as the primary source of temperature monitoring does not replace the need to manually record temperatures twice daily. Remember it's important to maintain the cold chain when you transport, handle, and store vaccines. By working together, we can make sure that vaccines retain their potency and are safe for Peel residents.